We've seen how to describe points in a plane using either Cartesian or polar coordinates. And we've seen how to describe points in three-dimensional space using either Cartesian or cylindrical coordinates. In this video, we'll see how to describe points in three-dimensional space in a third way, using spherical coordinates. The spherical coordinates for a point P in three-dimensional space are given by three numbers, rho, theta, and phi. Rho gives the distance of the point from the origin. In other words, rho is the length of the line segment connecting the origin to the point. If we now project that line segment onto the xy plane, then theta gives the angle between the positive x-axis and that projected line segment. One way to think of theta, it's the same theta as in polar coordinates for the point projected onto the xy plane. Now phi is a different angle. It's this angle here, the angle between the positive z-axis and the line segment from the origin to p. For spherical coordinates, there are restrictions on the possible values of rho and phi. Rho is required to be greater than or equal to zero, and phi is required to be between zero and pi. The coordinate theta can still take on any value. This is a little different from polar and cylindrical coordinates when both r and theta can take on any value. In this example, our point has spherical coordinates given by 2, pi over 4, and pi over 3. So 2 is our value of rho, that tells us the distance from the origin to our point. Pi over 4 is our value of theta, that tells us this angle here between the positive x-axis and the projection of this line segment onto the xy plane. And finally, our phi is pi over 3, that's this angle here from the positive z-axis down to our line from the origin to p. Please pause the video and see if you can relate the Cartesian coordinates of a point to its spherical coordinates by filling in these six equations. A hint is you might want to start with the equation for rho in terms of x, y, and z, and the equation for z in terms of r, theta, and phi, since those are the easiest. It might also help you to use this more general picture which happens to have two right triangles sitting in it. So starting with rho, rho represents the distance between the origin and the point p, and therefore this distance is given by the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. If we want to find z in terms of rho, theta, and phi, well z is the length of this line segment here, which is one leg of this right triangle whose hypotenuse has length rho. Since the only angle I've named in this triangle is this angle here, which is phi, and z is the length of the side adjacent to phi, I'm going to pull out my trig formula for cosine and say cosine of phi, that's adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's z over rho, and therefore z is given by rho cosine phi. Now moving on to x and y, x and y are the legs of this right triangle whose hypotenuse is given by this line segment labeled in the diagram with an r. In terms of this labeled angle theta, I know that x is the adjacent side to theta, so I, so I can say cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's x over r, and since y is the opposite side to theta, I can say sine of theta is y over r, so that gives me x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, but there's a problem here because r is not one of our three spherical coordinates. The three spherical coordinates are rho, theta, and phi, so I still need to rewrite r in terms of rho, theta, and phi. Now r is the length of this line segment, but it's also the length of this line segment on top, since these four lines form a rectangle. So I can use this right triangle 
and the fact that r is the length of the side opposite to phi to write down the equation sine of phi is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's r over rho, and therefore r is equal to rho sine phi. Substituting this in for r, I now have that x is equal to rho sine phi cosine theta, and y is equal to rho sine phi sine theta. Finally, I can relate theta and phi to x, y, and z by thinking about the fact that tangent theta, tangent of this angle, is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So that's y over x. Also, tangent of phi, that's going to be opposite over adjacent here. So that's r over z, but r which is the radius in polar coordinates, is, is just going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. So I have that tan phi is the square root of x squared plus y squared over z. These six equations are handy for getting back and forth between Cartesian coordinates and spherical coordinates. Please pause the video and decide what surfaces are described by these three equations. Rho equals 5 describes the set of all points that are of distance 5 from the origin. So that's the sphere of radius 5. Theta equals pi over 4 describes all points whose angle from the x-axis is pi over 4. So that's going to be a half plane at an angle of pi over 4. The reason that's a half plane and not a full plane is because rho is only allowed to be positive and phi is only allowed to be between 0 and pi and therefore there's no way to get onto the back part of this plane. Finally, the equation phi equals pi over 6 describes all points whose angle down from the z-axis is pi over 6. So that's going to be the shape of a cone. There won't be any bottom side to this cone below the xy plane because rho is required to be positive. In this video, we describe points in terms of the spherical coordinates rho, theta, and phi. We use the following three equations to convert x, y, and z to spherical coordinates, and three more equations to relate rho, theta, and phi to x, y, and z. Spherical coordinates are a very good way to integrate over regions that are shaped like this one, sort of bounded by two spheres and by two values of phi and by two values of theta. To carry out an integration in spherical coordinates, we need to rewrite the volume element dv in terms of d rho, d theta, and d phi. Like with polar and cylindrical coordinates, there's a conversion factor. And in this case, dv turns out to be equal to rho squared sine phi times d rho d theta d phi. So we compute our triple integral as an iterated integral, where we have to convert x, y, and z in terms of rho, theta, and phi. So we do that by plugging in rho sine phi cosine theta for x, rho sine phi sine theta for y, and rho cosine phi for z. Those are based on the equations from the previous page. And then we convert our volume element dv into rho squared sine phi d rho d theta d phi. I still have to put on my bounds of integration and in the order I wrote it here, doing integrating respect to rho first, let's see that these will be bounds in terms of rho, so I wrote that as a to b, just reading up here. And then next, theta, so theta is ranging from alpha to beta. And finally, phi is ranging from gamma to delta.